Welcome to Make Me Care, Chris' new video blog podcast experiment in which uh, writers and editors try to explain why their story of the week is worthy of our attention. I'm Amelia Yuri, and uh, today I'm here with Nathaniel Johnson, Chris' excellent food writer. Nate has been called by some the most thoughtful food and ag reporter out there right now. He's also been called some other names to read to repeat on air. Hey, how are you? So you wrote this week about some new research um, coming out in Nature, uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of a bummer. It's about how food is going to get even harder to uh, to produce in the future. So why don't you why don't you hit us with some of the doom and gloom? Yeah, we all. This is this is your your daily doom and gloom supplement, which we all need to survive, <laughs> um, especially as we're going to be getting less and less nutrients that we need to survive from our, our food. So what the scientists did in this case was to um, have these open containers that they were growing different crops in, rice and corn and wheat, all of the staples basically, and they put carbon dioxide into the, just free adding, blowing it into the air um, so that it, it's it simulated higher carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, so around um, 550 parts per million. Um, and they said, okay, if we do this, what happens with these plants? Do they, what happens to the nutrient composition? And unfortunately, they found that for a lot of plants, um, especially rice and peas and soybeans, um, and wheat, although wheat is a little bit more complicated, you had less, it was less nutrient dense. There was less iron, less zinc. And and those two things matter a lot. I'm confused though, because I thought that plants loved CO2. Yeah, exactly. They, and they do. Um, and I don't think we fully understand all the mechanisms of how they incorporate uh, zinc and, and iron into their seeds, um, but something about the way that they grow as they have more CO2 available um, seems to inhibit uh, the, the incorporation of these micronutrients. Okay, so it's only bad news for the humans who want to eat the plants. Yeah, the plants, the plants are happy. <laughs> it's just bad news for, for them. So micronutrients are important, but how important are they? Can we just like start taking more multivitamins? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we, meaning fairly affluent people in North America and Europe, will do that. And you can take uh, a zinc uh, pill or an iron multivitamin, um, and, and that will solve the problem. If, if this study is indeed correct and um, increased CO2 is going to cause even further lowering of the micronutrients uh, available to people, especially in, in developing countries, it could cause some really serious consequences because those people are already deficient and already suffering. So that sounds like bad news. How far away is 550 parts per billion? Basically, when do I need to have my uh, apocalypse bunker fully stocked? With vitamins. <laughs> Start buying vitamins now. Yeah. Um, in the, the the projections are it, uh, within 50 years. We'll oh, be wow. hitting that. Um, even if we do manage to make uh, reductions in emissions. But this has nothing to do with climate change, right? Exactly. This that's what makes this really interesting in a way. Even if you if you don't believe in climate change at all, even if you think that okay, sure, humans are burning fossil fuels and that produces carbon dioxide, but gosh darn it, that doesn't cause climate change. There's no such thing as the greenhouse effect. This is evidence that uh, there's still problems simply with putting more carbon into the atmosphere. Okay, but like really hardcore climate deniers are already in the business of uh, selectively believing science. So is this study like gonna break through somehow? 
Well, what? to be perfectly fair, this is just the first study that's studied. There's, there's been a lot of science that this study compiled. Um, it's a good study. It's really interesting. Um, but there will need to be more to, to really create a scientific consensus about this. That said, um, this, this carefully constructed climate denier argument that says, okay, yes, we can see the carbon levels going up at the observatory in Hawaii. Nobody can deny that. But that doesn't cause global warming. Um, even if the scientific consensus moves to the point to show that carbon alone is a huge problem, and you don't necessarily have to believe in global warming um, to, to realize we need to do something about carbon emissions, you can bet your life that the climate deniers will move the goalposts. I am willing to predict that this is exactly what will happen because there's this sort of carefully constructed, intricate justification for denying the scientific consensus. And then when that gets blown up, another a new one is built on even more precarious ground. So we're like we're like knocking out like one of the table legs. Yes, but it's a table that grows new legs. It's more like a prey predator coevolution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, or antibiotic resistance. Right. This, this, is, this is a new uh, med that we're throwing at this problem, um, but, but the bacteria are just going to evolve. <laughs> well, that's also pretty gloomy. I mean, there's always a chance it could work, though, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the hardcore deniers, of course, are, and I like, it's nice that we can compare them to pathogenic uh, bacteria. Um, <laughs> They're, they're going to evolve, you know, things, they're, they're not going to be convinced, but what we see happening um, as the science builds up is that more and more real people who are open-minded and aren't fully committed to waging their war their whole lives against this issue um, are slowly convinced um, by reality, you know, that the Flat Earth Society um, was pretty big back when Columbus sailed around the world, and now it is, it's gotten much smaller. Right. Plus, everyone has to eat, so... That's true, and, uh, you know, I, I think one of the big things that's, that is moving us in the right direction is that people are seeing that the, there's real effects coming from the climate change, uh, and as those crop up, it's going to get harder and harder to deny, and at the very least, People are going to admit, okay, we have to do something about these problems. You know, I can I can make up my elaborate tinfoil hat story about what's causing these problems. But we're still going to have to do something about them, and um, you know that may be cold comfort, but it's at least a form of comfort. Well, thanks for joining us on Make Me Care, and uh, keep on being the best food and ag reporter out there. Thanks so much.